All right guys, Tuesday vlog. This one, as promised, is about the Jumper T16 and why I switched. I'm not gonna really go into depth about uh, the firmware or so much the functionality. There's, you know, there's already much better videos out there about that kind of stuff. Um, I'm just gonna talk about it from my perspective which as a racer is ergonomics um, but real quick let's go down to the table and uh, kind of compare it to my previous radios all right guys so just a uh, quick tabletop look so kind of what I wanted to highlight here is the reach from the stick to the edge of the radio because that's, when we're talking about ergonomics, at least for probably for thumbing and for pinching, your 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 level of, I don't know if I want to say control, um, but it's going to be determined by that relationship from the stick to the edge of the radio. So this is, this is going to be similar to something like an X9, where... You've got good range of motion on the sticks. And I do like that these gimbals have less throw than a typical Free Sky radio. But you see that range of motion compared to something like the X7, which from the center of the stick to the edge is really far it's like an extra like seven millimeters um, so I mean I can still reach the center but the 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 leverage the is it leverage the fulcrum um, you know it's it's definitely farther the sticks are farther apart they're farther away from the edge like you know they just made this radio really wide and and we'll, we'll talk more about that later. And then, um, so compared to like the X9, this is my original X9. So it's similar, but you can see the X9 has like a lot more throw. And these are like really short. And just because I have this guy, I got this for my son. Um, so he can start simming, but the reach from the stick to the edge is also really short. So I, I've actually heard that people are racing with this X9 Lite just because, you know, the reach to the sticks is so good. All right, let's go back up. <clears throat> so yeah, for a while there, um, you know, I've been flying the QX7 since about 2017 and um, a few months ago I'm not sure what made me decide to kind of try something different but you know it was probably just like all the hype for the T16 I was really curious about it and I was curious if I should move from the QX7 to a traditional radio and when I say to traditional the QX7 is shaped really oddly so for a while I went back to my X9D just to see how I'd like it but the reason why I switched to the QX7 in the first place or, or what got me really excited about it was, were basically just these grips when you first hold the QX7 um, the, the grips just make it feel amazing and you, you kind of look past the fact that the gimbals are so far away from the outsides of the radio and in it, interestingly enough um, I think the QX7 is actually what kind of caused um, like Zero's retirement his, his downfall because if we look back to 2017, when he was at his peak, he was flying with an X9D. Um, 
and that was the year he like set the lap record for the uh, multi DP regional qualifier. Uh, I mean, he was just on fire. And at that qualifier, he won seven hundred dollars from Emacs for uh, for winning with Emacs products. And so when he got that prize money, he decided after using mine that he would buy himself a QX7 and then he bought himself a set of Commander goggles. And you know, and it's not something I forced on him. Like, you know, I let him use my QX7 and I was like, you know, if you want one, it's up to you. And, I, and again, I think when you initially hold a QX7, it, it just, it feels amazing and it kind of clouds your judgment almost. Um, because you don't realize the detriment of having the sticks so far away from the outsides of the radio. It like, for, for racing, it, it like, it, it'll limit, uh, what you can do on a racetrack because you can't transition as quickly because the throw on the sticks are so far away from your hands, if that makes sense. Like it's, it's, it's just, it's about, it's about leverage and leverage and the, the fulcrum, I, I'm, you know, I'm sorry if this is not super scientific, but basically it takes more effort and more reach to hit full stick deflection on the QX7 versus something like an X9D or the, uh, the Jumper T16. Now, the, the Jumper actually takes it a step further you can adjust the gimbals like the center of the gimbals out so the sticks are leaning towards the outside which i did um you've got a lot of adjustability on the stick length that's really important but the and then i've got these 3d printed grips so it's actually similar to the qx7 in that you have something to grab onto back there but the, the ergos of this radio, I mean, like, especially with the sticks having less throw, it's just, you just, you just have more control with this radio. I mean, I just, I love, like, as soon as I got this in the mail, um, and I got this from Heli Nation, I'll throw a link in the description. The, I mean, the, the ergos and the stick throw, they're, they're just, they're awesome. Um, I feel like, and you know, and I felt this way about the QX7 too, but I feel like this is just gonna, you know, improve my piloting on the racetrack for freestyle like what have you you know the, the radio is awesome for like a ton of other reasons like and, and again i don't get super like political when it comes to fpv but like the way that that free sky has been behaving is just kind of crazy like it started out in the early days that you know we got Hold on. East End. Got to keep it down, bud. Stop talking, okay? Thank you. It started out in the early days that the X9 was the go-to radio because back then all we had was Spectrum. It's funny, I'm wearing a Spectrum hat. I'm wearing a Spectrum hat because um, I use Spectrum radios with my RC cars. And so Spectrum was nice enough to send me a hat and a receiver and some other stuff. Um, so that's why I have a Spectrum hat. <laughs> I don't use them for, for FPV, but I do use them for Surface. Um, but when we started FPV, the X9D was the go-to radio because it was affordable, $200. And it did everything. You know, it's got all the channels, all the functionality. I mean, it was just like a no-brainer. But... And Free Sky is kind of like Fat Shark in that way, is that they haven't really done anything different. And they keep raising the cost of their radios. So, like, you can get an X9D Special Edition for, it's like $250, $260. And on top of that, on top of raising the price, they limited the radio. So... I don't know about the X9, but the QX7 doesn't natively work with Crossfire. You have to modify it because they screwed up the baud rate. They don't work with D8 receivers. So like my Tiny Hawk uses a D8 receiver. It wouldn't natively work with a new Free Sky radio. I mean, I'm pretty sure that's the case. Like they have D16 now, 
but they're like, Free Sky is implementing this new protocol to try to lock out the market or lock down the market. And it's just like, they're just being greedy, basically. I mean, and, and I understand wanting to be profitable, but, you know, if they would have just like stayed true to what they were in the beginning, which is like an affordable solution that destroys the competition, um, they would have been fine. They didn't have to like, you know, send letters to vendors about carrying jumper or, or try to lock out other protocols or try to lock out crossfire. I mean, I mean, they're, they're, it's like they're, they're trying to play dirty and like that personally, that doesn't offend me. Like, again, I don't care about politics. I don't care about what companies in China are doing, but I mean, when you, when you try to play dirty or if you, you know, you very rarely does that work in getting ahead in anything, right? So now, because of those antics, Jumper came in and, you know, they're, they're what Free Sky was in 2014, honestly. Because these are, I'm watching my time so I don't go over, these are $160 and they do everything. They're, I mean, they're just amazing. I mean, okay. I will say that with this being a fairly new model and it's being like the updates are coming out super quick, there's bound to be QEC issues. And um, one that I had the other day flying was I got what is called a key, a stuck key warning, which it, I didn't have any stuck keys, but it's just something internally messes up. So I took it apart, reseated a couple of ribbon cables. Um, I've read that it could have something to do with like the cheap SD card, so I replaced the SD card, and it's fine now. But just 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 a warning. Um, it seems pretty common that people are getting this cut this this stuck key error, and again, that's just like there's bound to be a little bit of QC issues. Like this guy was uh, missing a screw. This it didn't come with a screw down here in the corner, <laughs> um, which is whatever. But yeah. For, for for my perspective, um, the ergos are great. See, so, yeah, I mean, you know, the uh, your radio is your whole connection to your quad. Um, so it's it's got to fit your hands. Um, you've got to have good leverage on the sticks. You know, if you want to be successful, and yeah, it's it's a shame that. It's a shame that we went to the QX7 because again, and it wasn't a big deal for me because I have adult size hands, but back then Zero was like really small and he had really small hands. Now like now it probably wouldn't be such a big issue, but I really think him switching to a QX7 kind of ruined him um, because after he switched to the QX7, he just like, his consistency just like went through the floor. I mean, I think that was like a major contributing factor. And then this year, like he, he stuck through it through 2018. And then in the beginning of 2019, when I quit Thrust UAV and, you know, I pulled him aside and I talked to him about it, he just decided, well, you know, if I wasn't going to be doing it professionally anymore, then he, uh, he might as well not do it either. Like his heart wasn't in it. And I think a lot of it had to do with the QX7, unfortunately. Um, you know, maybe maybe one day he'll come back. We can get him a jumper, and uh, and it's funny because he hasn't flown since spring of this year, and and I bet if I just like gave him some like random ass setup, he would still be faster than me, even though I fly almost every day. But you know, yeah. So yeah, twenty nineteen it was a weird year. It was a it was a weird year. I quit. I quit my job. In April at Thrust um, and I wasn't even sure if I was gonna like keep FPVing I was like into the RC cars I was starting a new job at AT&T um, and there wasn't like much to be excited about but then something else came along in August and that would obviously be the DJI system. Not to make this another DJI video, but 
people people talk about what companies do for the hobby and what companies don't do for the hobby. And one thing I will say is that thanks to DJI, DJI, like my interest for FPV is just like it's through the roof. It's the it's it's winter and I'm flying every day. That's not something I've done for years. Um, and you know, it, this is just like, you know, one person on a personal level, but I'm buying radios, I'm buying quads, I'm building quads, and a lot of this stuff I don't pay for, but a lot of it I do. So because flying the HD has like revitalized my interest in H FPV, like I'm now putting cash back into the industry in, you know, in the way of radios and FPV cameras and drones. I mean, like you can hate on DJI, but like, I'm pretty sure like this is not just me, but this is causing people to be interested in FPV again and to start putting money back into the industry. Cause you know, FPV has been like waning. Ugh. But yeah, 2019 was a weird year. Um, Weird year, but you know, I'm, I'm excited to be here. I'm excited to be flying. Uh, I can't wait till racing starts. Hopefully I have an HD racing solution ready by for 2020 because I don't want to race with analog. Like, um, you know, I'll, I'll fly analog when needed, like with my micros or with my long ranger for the GPS, but it's definitely not enjoyable, not anymore <laughs> and it, it's funny i keep trying these different cameras and i keep playing with the settings because i think something's wrong but there's nothing wrong it's just it's just so hard to uh see clearly through analog and that's not a dig that's just it is the way it is but yeah um didn't mean to get too off track but i did kind of want to you know just kind of talk about 2019 and like how the history of our radios has affected us, I guess I could say. Like it's like it's it's really interesting. Like once I started flying the jumper, and and like I saw how much control I had with it, like on the racetrack or freestyling, it, it occurred to me like, damn, like switching to the QX7. It you know it was not a big deal for me, but like, I really think it, it kind of ruined zero. So again, yeah, maybe he'll come back someday and give it another shot. Um, I think that'd be awesome. And, and again, like I showed on the tabletop, I've got this X nine light. I mean, it, like I said, I don't care about politics. I'll spend my money when I think something is, you know, is worth that amount of money. And you know, the X nine light, uh, it wasn't very expensive, but the reason why I bought it is, because it's small. Like if you look at it compared to the jumper, it's tiny. Here, let's do an uppy closey. So if you look at it compared to the jumper, it's pretty small. So it fits my eight year old's hands. So this is gonna be for him. Um, I'm gonna get him on Velocidrone. Like right now he's not really into it, but I figure once I get him learning the basic controls, and he actually tries FPV, maybe he'll like it, maybe he won't. I can't imagine there'd be like a little kid that wouldn't want an FPV, but we'll see. And and if he doesn't like it, um, maybe my daughter will. <laughs> Gotta, that's the, that's the thing about being a dad, guys, is like, you just like have all these excuses to play with toys, right? And like, in doing it with your kids, it's just, it's, it's just the most fun thing in the world. Yeah, just 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 having kids and having a reason to to keep having fun and playing and staying active. It's just it's the best thing in the world. But anyway, Jumper T16. This is going to be the radio I'm using going into 2020. I'm excited for 2020. I'm, I'm excited for FPV. I'm excited for HD FPV. Uh, I'm just... I'm just excited to be here, guys. Thanks for watching.